Good morning. We're glad you've joined us for the Sunday morning service of Tusculum Hills Baptist Church, a caring and vibrant church that offers God's help to all people. We invite you to join us now for a special message from God's Word from Pastor Paul Gunn. I'm going to be preaching this morning from Romans chapter 6, starting with verse 15. The title of my message is The Illustration of Slavery. Romans chapter 6. Last week on Easter Sunday, we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We talked about our, our identity in Christ and how, how that identity makes us dead to our sin, buried with Christ, and raised up with Him. When we live in Christ, we are alive now in, until eternity and into eternity. So as believers in Jesus Christ, we don't really have to fear death because we will never die. Our bodies will die, but our soul will continue to live, and it will only get better. So our look as believers needs to be looking toward the future, looking toward the things to come. Today I'll continue preaching through Paul's uh, chapter 6 of Romans, his letter to the Romans. And we left off in verse 14, chapter 6. For sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. And under grace, we have a new master. The word for master is also translated an owner with full authority or control. It's used to describe someone who rules over another person. Sin has some power to rule in our lives because we let sin rule in our lives. Would you agree with me on that? But now, because of Christ's love for us displayed on the cross and his defeat of sin and, and death in his, his death, burial, and resurrection, we are not under the law, we are not condemned, but rather we are under grace. We are freed from the bondage and condemnation of sin. So to illustrate this freedom from sin and this new reign of grace, Paul chose the familiar everyday concept that the Romans knew all about, slavery, to show them what it means to be alive in Christ right now. And when I, when I write sermons, and those of you who've... who've uh, put together Sunday school lessons, Bible studies, or maybe even a speech for work or school or something. You know the importance of illustrations that help people connect with what you're trying to teach them. So I try to use a variety of those illustrations. Sometimes I might use an illustration from science, uh, movies, sometimes sports, history, current events, other stories in the Bible, maybe even an illustration from my own life. If I give an illustration from my family's life, I might have to ask permission before I share that with people. So here we see that Paul, Paul appeals to the Romans with, with all their cultural baggage and their particular thinking about this image of slavery. He used this to describe this new life in Christ. I, you know, slavery, this word master has a meaning. The word slavery has a meaning. And, you know, this, the word master doesn't necessarily mean any, something negative because you might be master of something that's good and not sinful. You, maybe somebody has mastered a particular art, a particular craft. But the word slavery has a negative connotation and for good reason. Probably out of all human institutions, slavery is the, most, is the worst and, and, and just the, the, the most awful of sins. But Paul digs into this term, slavery. There are three points to my message today. First, we are all slaves to either sin or righteousness. Second, freedom comes from obedience of the heart. And three, a new slavery to God has eternal benefits. Are you with me? Now, the, the kids this morning, they all have a code word. What is it? Slavery. slavery. 
Right, they've got a contest going on, and that's the code word they're listening for this morning. First, we are all slaves to either sin or righteousness. The Romans were very familiar with slavery. Romans used slaves in their houses as well as for their manual labor, for their farming labor. Slaves could be bought or sold. Slaves could be rented temporarily from another slave owner. And freedom was considered a privilege. It was not considered a right. And freedom came at a cost. Another person had to be enslaved for, for one to be free. And while some Romans were good to their slaves, often life was harsh. An owner of slaves could, could kill them without fear of being punished because the slave had no rights. The master literally owned the slave like an object. They had no legal status or right to pursue individual freedom or liberty or, or to pursue any type of life they wanted. Slaves could not own property. Instead, they were the property of the slave owner. Sounds like our own American history, doesn't it? And Paul preached something that would have been revolutionary to the Romans as he used this illustration of slavery. He said this, we are all slaves. That would have made the eyebrows of Roman people raise. As a Roman citizen, slavery, being a slave as a Roman citizen was impossible. It's kind of like us as Americans. Owning a person is against the law. And just like American citizens, the Roman citizens had privileges and rights. So Paul said in verse 16 of chapter 6, Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness? The point is here, that we either offer ourselves to sin or we offer ourselves to obedience as slaves. It's either one or the other. It's sin or obedience. That's hard for us to uh, accept maybe that we're truly not free. We're slaves to one or the other. Slaves to sin or slaves to obedience. Jesus had a similar conversation with the Jews who believed in him in John chapter 8. He said to them, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And they answered him, we are Abraham's descendants, and we've never been slaves to anyone. Well, they, they kind of, uh, they forgot a lot of their history, didn't they? But they thought in our current generation... We've never been slaves to anybody. Uh, how can you say that we will be set free? And Jesus said this, Very truly I say to you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Jesus offered freedom, but the Jews he was talking with didn't think that they'd ever been slaves to anyone. They didn't realize that they needed to be set free. And this is the problem. We cannot be set free until we realize that we are in bondage. You take a person who has an addiction, let's just say for purpose of illustration, a drug or alcohol addiction, we all know that a person who has an addiction like that has to hit what? Rock bottom before they can get help. How many people with habits have said, well, I could quit any time? And then they quit for a few hours and say, see, I quit, for, I quit for a few hours. And then they pick it back up again. Until we realize that we are in bondage, until we realize that we are slaves to a sin, slaves to an awful habit, slave to whatever, we cannot be set free. Listen again to Jesus' reply to the Jews. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. 
<clears throat> and he explained that, uh, that, a, that a slave doesn't have a permanent place in the family. And when you are a slave to sin, you, you don't belong in Jesus' family. Jesus explained what, a, what family you belong to if you're a slave to sin, if you're serving sin. Continuing in, in this passage from John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus said, You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So if you carry out Satan's desires, you don't belong to the truth. I was thinking about this yesterday, about types of slavery that we may find ourselves in. Possibly the worst kind of slavery of sin is the slavery of bad attitude. Slavery of selfish attitude. Slavery of sour disposition. Or how about this? The slavery of letting others rob you of your joy. And when we believe lies, the father is Satan. The father of those lies is Satan. But if we choose to believe Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, we will have freedom. So a slave to God, a slave to obedience, is also a slave to freedom. That sounds like a contradiction. You have to think about that and let it soak in. We can turn our eyes away from ourselves and the lies we hear and live by the power of Jesus' word. What are the lies we hear every day? The lies we, are, we hear are, you're no good. Don't forget that sin from years ago. God's not really forgiving you of that. Don't we hear those things in our minds? Don't we hear things, don't we hear the lies that tell us that we're inadequate and that we, we really can't do that thing God's calling us to do? We really can't take that step of faith. We really can't give extra in any way because we might run out, whatever, whatever that might be. Lies come to us all the time. But when you are set free, you have a new freedom. And you are a child of God. You are a son or a daughter of God. So, so as, as the scripture said, Jesus said that the slave has no permanent part of the family. The slave is just owned by the family. But when a person is free, the person becomes a follower of Jesus, then that person becomes a part of the family. We are all slaves to sin or righteousness. Next, freedom comes from obedience of the heart. Jesus said, when he was talking to his people in John 8, he said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. We must hold to his teaching. The word hold is also translated as abide or remain or stay. Let's look back here at uh, Romans chapter 6. Go to verse 17 as we continue uh, studying this. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. Truly abiding and remaining in the word means that your heart is obeying it. You're not just hearing the word. You are believing it. You're not just studying the Bible as some novel or, or, or book, of, book of clever sayings, but you're, 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 you're soaking it in. You're letting it become part of your life. And in doing so, in following Jesus' teaching, you become a slave to righteousness as a child of God. And here's some background for you to know that might uh, put some light on this. Being set free from slavery would have related to the Romans in a unique way. 
The Romans had an interesting system where slaves could be freed. Roman owners could free their slaves, slaves just because they wanted to, or they could be bought out of slavery. And this process involved a Roman magistrate, and upon freedom, a freed slave would become a full Roman citizen, and so would their offspring. Think about the parable of the prodigal son. This uh, rebellious young man asked for his inheritance early, and his father gave it to him. And the scripture tells us that he went out and blew it all in wild, riotous living. He became a slave to the, uh, the misuse of his, his inheritance. He became a slave to sin. But when he returned home, he was forgiven, and now he was free. And he was free in a new way. You see, he was free before he left home. But now when he returned home, he was free in a whole new way. He'd seen the world that he didn't want. He knew what it was like to be a slave to sin. And now he wanted to return home. And when he did, he was free again. So here we have that we are either slaves to either sin or righteousness. And second, we have that freedom comes from the, from the obedience of the heart. And then third... A new slavery to God gives us eternal rights. Look in verses 21 through 23. What benefit did you reap at the time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Paul asked the Romans what, the, what was the benefit of serving sin. Now they were, they were ashamed of the things that they used to do. But at that time even, Paul wanted to know, what was the result? And he answers, the result was death. There were no benefits. But now, what was the benefit of being a slave to God? Paul says first holiness and then eternal life. Isn't life full of choices? Slaves to sin or slaves to righteousness. There's really no neutral ground. One or the other. And listen to this great verse again in verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wages. That is an interesting word. And I, I don't think of sin as something you receive wages for because I think of wages as a, as a positive word. Everybody's looking, looking forward to payday. Everybody's looking forward to the, the wages that they've earned from the work that they've done. It's something that you work for. So we see here that, that when we are a slave to sin, we're actually working for it. We're serving it. We're striving and trying to live a certain way. And what is the payment? What are the wages for working for sin? For having sin as your employer, I mean. Paul says the wages is death. Not a good benefit, is it? But then he talks about the opposite. Not a wage worked for, but a gift from God, our master. We have a new master a new master who doesn't pay us for serving him. Because as we know, we can never do enough. Paul started off Romans by telling us that our works do not save us. And Paul repeated that several times and throughout all of the epistles that Paul wrote, we get that recurring theme that works do not save us, only 
repentance of sin, and trust in Jesus. Only the grace of God saves us, and that's it. This prodigal son who returned home did not work for the love of his father. Quite the opposite. The father loved him unconditionally. The father gave him an undeserved gift. I'll hear Dave Ramsey, people call into Dave Ramsey, and they say, how are you doing? And Dave has his answer. What is it? Better than I deserve. What a true statement for all of us. How are you, believer in Jesus Christ? Better than I deserve. Because we know what we deserve, don't we? We know that our works can't save us, and we know that our, our works are no more valuable than filthy rags when it comes to salvation. And Ephesians 2.10 tells us that God's created us for good works, but, but it's a byproduct of salvation in Christ. It's not a means to salvation. But boy, don't we have a hard time accepting the fact that there's nothing that we can do for ourselves in the spiritual realm. It's all because of Jesus. And when we receive the love of Jesus, we are accepting the gift of eternal life. On our own, we are earning death. Think about that. It would make a great sketch. The, the unsaved sinner who has a job, and his job is working for sin, and he's working really hard for the retirement package. And his, his wages, as he's working for sin, when, it, when payday comes, he receives death. And when retirement comes, the retirement package is hell. But the believer in Jesus Christ realizes that we're, that we're not working, we're receiving. We're repenting and receiving. We've got another way to live, and that is forever as God's children. And then the retirement package is eternal life. So we have to choose to walk away uh, from this gift. We have to choose to walk away from hearing the word, this good news of life and love, we have to choose to let other things nag at our attention. We have to choose to let the lies of the enemy steal our life and joy. Or we can, just as Jesus tells us, remain in his word. We need to let it stay in our hearts. We need to become slaves to righteousness. A slavery that is not fear of punishment, but an obedient response to who Jesus says we are. We are his children bought out of sin at a great cost, the cost of the life of Jesus Christ. So are you free? The answer is no. You're either a slave to sin or a slave to righteousness. I want to ask you this morning, where are you? Who owns you? Oh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm my own man. I'm my own woman, not according to Romans 6. You're owned. You've been, as believers, you've been bought with a price. So don't allow yourself to be a slave to sin. Repent of sin. You remember the old, you sin every day and you don't know it? I used to hear that all the time when I was a kid. It was a big theology up there in Westmoreland. You sin every day and you don't know it. Really? Really? I don't think so, because the Holy Spirit in us is, is here to convict us of our sin. And when we sin, we should repent, and we should trust Jesus all the more. If you are running today, it's time to stop running. If you are a slave to sin, be like the prodigal son. Let it go and return home. And you'll see the Father at a distance ready to welcome you with open arms. 
Your earthly family might not do that. Your friends might not do that. But our heavenly Father will do that because Jesus has already paid the price for your sin. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come to you during our invitation time. I've preached as plainly, as simply as I know how to, to explain this concept, this truth. We are either slaves to sin or slaves to righteousness. I pray for the person listening today who is who's caught up as a slave to sin. Help this person realize that he or she cannot set himself or herself free, but only the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can do that. Please convict them of their need to repent of sin and trust Jesus. Father, during our invitation time, I pray that your spirit would move among us, that people would be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together and we'll have our altar call at this time. We're waiting down front to talk with anybody who would, who would like to know more, who would like to pray to receive Christ. Also, if anybody would like to join us today, I talked with somebody yesterday who's, who uh, wants to become a member of our church. Uh, we, we require this. We require that you have been saved or you're coming to be saved and that you have been baptized by immersion or that you're coming as a candidate to be baptized. So we're here. We're waiting for you. If you have another prayer need, we're willing to pray with you. More than happy to do that. Let's sing together. Take my life, lead me, Lord. Take my life, lead me, Lord. Make my life useful to Did you know the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. And when you make Him Lord, it means that you have surrendered your will to His will and that you've repented of your ways in order to follow Him. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you.